Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. It's Couch Pilots. Welcome all of my friends to the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, a.k.a. the Black Cap Gun. Across from me is my best friend and yours. His name is Philip Restisher. Evening, Captain. Good day, mate. (laughs) I see what you're doing. (laughs) Right off the bat, I see what you're doing. I like that, eh? Uh, Good on you there. How was that? Boomerang. Yeah. Uh, Koala bear. I, I... Eucalyptus rub. Okay, sure. If you want wallaby, back to back. Yeah. What? What do you? Why are we doing this? That's silly. We're, we're being silly. Why well, are we doing it? We've got tons of new listeners in Australia. Yep. Um. And I just thought, hey, let's let's settle in and make them feel at home. You know, we've talked about in the past how I'm kind of this wide-eyed optimist, just walking around with my head in the clouds, looking around. Yep. And while you are a nose to the grindstone numbers guy, and you scour our numbers all the time, and you've uncovered something uh, pretty revolutionary recently. Yeah, that another show helped us get listeners in Australia. It is just that simple. It's it's that simple. So so, so a big uh, a big good day, big good day to uh, Feather to Launch and the um, comedy troupe. The consumption, the consumption. Out, of, out of Australia, and uh, yeah, thanks for the big shout out recently. You definitely brought some listeners our way. We really appreciate that. We um, can't do the same for you. I don't know if we can. We'll try. <laughs> They're, they have a nice show. I, I like to listen to their program. And if all uh, four of our listeners would please download <laughs> all six of their shows, all six, all their shows six times. There you go. Sorry, that, that makes sense. Uh, I'm ready to podcast, man. I'm ready to have a good time. I'm ready to take a flight. Yeah, uh, I've been hanging out in the captain's lodge with um, with my buddy here. Well, I'm mean, our buddy. Yeah, for sure. Why don't you go ahead and introduce some? We do we do have a third person as we're apt to do on occasion, and that sure. today is no exception. Usually, it's somebody um, cashing their frequent flyer points or um, a contest winner, the Groupon. We had a Groupon debacle, yeah. but um, and we've had we've had guys from you know we were we were under of investigation. Yeah, we, we had someone come on doing some investigations for yeah. A lot of uh, times we talk about going to pilot school and how much fun we had. You know, years honestly. While I was there, I was like, this sucks. My nose against the grindstone, just like you earlier. But um, I look back on it, best time of my life. Oh, they, were the, be- they life. were the best of times. They were the worst of times. Exactly. So um, I got a buddy, one of our buddies from uh, Couch Pilot School. Yeah, Phoenix University Online. Phoenix University. Mm-hmm. And he called me up the other day. He's like, hey, I'm coming into town for the holidays. I want to meet up with you guys, go have some beers, drink yeah. some scotch. Yeah. And so. Uh, our old classmate from Phoenix online school, Andrew. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome, Andrew. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Man, um, we had some great times back in the day. Oh, my God. Just the best times. I, I, Andrew, I mean, you're talking to the mic very mellow, but this dude was uh, a party animal. It was all the Fosters. Yeah, it was all the Fosters. There you go. <laughs> um we had the night that he won the um, mud wrestling competition against those midgets. Yeah, then even the score, they said you have to do a keg stand first. And he's like, yeah, no problem. It's almost like he expected to drink an entire keg of beer before wrestling small people. And God damn it if he didn't do it. He did a great job. Of course he did. Um, the difference between Andrew and us is you paid attention when they were talking about getting it up and bringing it down. Right. And I paid attention about all the stuff in the middle. Thus making you and I the equivalent of one good captain. And he's he's the best. He was a uh, valedictorian. Mm-hmm. And he knows how to get it up and bring it down and do everything in the middle. Valid big dick dictorian. Well, that's more fun just to stay up, though. Right. He, yeah. he loves it. Yeah. He, he's, he, you were always keeping it up in school, man. Yeah, yeah, get it up. Just keep it up. Keep it going. So many uh, stewardesses have... <laughs> Have he's, ro- cl- he's claimed so many kids he's, in every country. He's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of notches in his fuselage. <laughs> so uh, hey, no, we, we we thought we'd have him on the show and take a flight with us. You know, God forbid something. You know, like if me and you both passed out, all our listeners for this episode are safe because Andrew can just come get the joystick and you know hit that one button over there. Yeah, you know if we're the uh, button, do, yeah, is it, it red? Yeah, hit that red button. We got a lot of gizmos and gadgets, but I don't have to tell you what they're for. You no, know what they're for. Um, it's a lot of uh, 
I, w- I would pass out, basically, is what I'm saying. I think I want to pass out. But it doesn't matter which one of us does, because he can do any of it. Right. We, we both could just go back and play Chinaman Checkers if we wanted to, oh, and he could do everything. Well, the marbles? That's so hard. I never understood it. It's like a big star with a bunch of holes in it and mm-hmm. like 12,000 marbles you got to pay attention that's to. That's right. That's exactly right. It makes no sense to me. That's right. So, I mean, there's the three of us. We're going to take this thing up, and we're going to review... We're going, to, we're going to review a show today, absolutely, just like we always do. And I, I want to say real quickly, um, before we – I know we've got some fan feedback that I'd love to get to. Oh, no, to, no, you're fine. You're fine. But um, I do want to say that um, you coming into town, Andrew, having a great time with us, and, and I'm so glad you got to meet DSJ last night. Yeah. Uh, DSJ being Down Syndrome John, he's he's our, our best buddy. He works the tarmac, and he waves those golden cones around. Golden cones, yes. And um, he's he was so excited to meet you because you're, you're kind of like this legend. You yeah. know, we, we, we talk, talk about you all the time. We talked about it, and he was so excited, and the four of us got to go out and just have a hell of a time. And like I said, Andrew likes to drink scotch, mm-hmm. and DSJ had never had scotch before. We, no. we, 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 but we get him Shirley Temples when we take him out, yeah, yeah. and he still gets ripped on the sugar. Yeah. Um, but you gave him a, a, a nice aged scotch, yeah. um, dry, mm-hmm. um, and he had a great time. Let's just say he had a great time. But, Where did we leave him? I don't remember where we left him. I actually thought you, uh, Captain Restasher, was going to find out where he was. No, when I when I left the bar, I thought you guys were going because I, I had to go home. I mean, oh. ooh. so have you heard from him today? Um, no, and you know, it's it, honestly it's about fifty percent of the time that I see him from the captain's lounge to in the plane sure. where we are now. So we said better hope he's on the tarmac then. Um, yeah, Lord willing. I wow, that's I'm actually a little worried. His now. mom's gonna be pissed. <laughs> His mom is. Going if we to be lost pissed. him again, <laughs> uh, you know what does uh, the almost like the opposite effect of of me getting pissed is getting fan feedback. Oh, love fan feedback, and um, we invite all of our listeners mm-hmm. um, to get those frequent flyer points by contacting the show. How many ways are there? There's a billion ways. There's um. So many shows say, you know, contact the show or, you know, we'd love to have you follow us on this format or this, but we're the actually we're the only show that gives something back. We get we give you frequent flyer miles, right? Frequent flyer points for for listening to the show, for telling your friends about the show, following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you can even call us now at one uh, nine I'm sorry, one nine one zero pilots one. Right. And leave us a message and all those things add up to frequent flyer yep. points. So um, we didn't have anybody call the dial in number, so everybody needs to write that down. Um, but we did get some fan feedback from, uh, face, uh, Facebook mm-hmm. and let me see here. Okay. So, um, let's see. Lori Garcia. Yeah. The creator, creator of super Clyde. <laughs> um, she, for the last episode that came out, uh, as of this recording was B cops. I don't know. And <laughs> it says, Oh my God, I can't wait to listen to this. And then Richard, don't call him Dick, a.k.a. Big Dick T. Big Dick T, yeah. Uh, we will be checking it out tonight for sure. I started listening on my way home, uh, way into work, but uh, didn't get very far. And so Lori put, oh my gosh. Oh, this is later on. <clears throat> Only two hours after that. I laughed so hard listening to this. Couch Pilots themed wedding would be perfect. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. We'll have Conrad give matching tattoos for our wedding party. And I'm thinking that we should get, we shall get... Stone cutter, stone cutters tattoos on our butts. What's a stone cutter? I remember it as being. That sounds to me like a reference from the Simpsons. It was their version of the Masons. Okay, but it, they all, um, yeah, they had kind of. It looked like almost the um, the scythe and sickle for, on the uh, Russian flag, and like a hammer maybe. On so, um, okay. I mean, wh- whatever they want to tattoo me with, I will accept. For sure. And so I said, I'm glad you guys liked it. Uh, there's more in an up and coming episode that we talk more. About uh, their wedding that they're. I feel like have. we're talking about them all the time. Well, because they're the best fans. They they, they they feed back all the time. Absolutely. Uh, and then Richard says, "Well, considering we make up what seems to be half of your fan base, I suggest you keep <laughs> catering to our every desire, which is very very true." And then recently they had a. Um... Oh, okay. We had to get. Yeah, we got a picture there. of the stone cutters. Yeah. Um, as you know, a couple months back. They had a Couch Pilots meetup in California, which which is our second highest grossing. Um, People love us. People love yeah, us. Yeah, in California. And so, again, Conrad, Lori, and Big Dick T take a picture of each other all together. Wow, yeah. They're hanging out again. It says, hanging with Big Dick T and Lori G. So turbulent, so interesting. So turbulent. And, of, and of course, Conrad's got to put the interesting part in. I, 
I know. It, I it bothers it. me. Hashtag so turbulent. I like that. Right. And so some Good guy one. named Joey Powers commented on the picture. So guess what? He's going to get fan feedback, frequent flyer points. I think that some people get frequent flyer points and don't even know it. I remember a few years ago, someone's like, hey, type in this website for the state of Illinois. You can type in your name, maybe your social security number, and I'll tell you if any um, – like local companies owe you money or if they have like a package waiting for you. It's the same thing for couch sure. plants. If you write into us, we'll tell you how many frequent flyer points you have. And they are you can get an array of surprise prizes for them. Yeah. And uh, Joey Powers, he says, cheers. <clears throat> che- cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers to you, friend. Uh, Joey, that's uh, 37 points for you. And I said, I'm glad you guys are having a great time discussing the ins and outs of CouchCon. Because mm-hmm. you know that's what they're talking about. Sure. Uh, and Richard says, and the wedding plans, of course. And then Conrad says, oh, and see, Couch, Couch Con 2017, he made it, what it should be, CC2017. So yeah. he, he, he abbreviated it. He's a tattoo artist. That's he, really cool. I like that Because it wouldn't fit across somebody's breast, so he just had to put CC. Now, and now Conrad is, is primarily, he primarily does breasts. Is that fair to say? Yeah, he only tattoos breasts mm-hmm. and clitorises. Okay. I asked him to do my taint, and he wouldn't do it. He did oh, the, really? He, he wouldn't do your No, taint? he did the back of my legs, but he said, I don't want to see your taint. Huh. Uh, but he's like, it's going to get real weird. And then Lori sent us a link, a YouTube link, which was a blue link, a classically blue link. Oh, good. Um, where the, the, the man show, remember the man show? with Yeah. yeah. Uh, they talked about um, getting drunk and putting on uh, pilot outfits. You know, as much as I like Adam Carolla, I, I'm not, I wasn't a fan of, and I'm not familiar with the Man Show. But they, they, they apparently had some funny bits. Well, yeah, they were disgraceful to women. I mean, wasn't that the one that always ended with women jumping on trampolines? Jumping on yeah. trampolines. Yeah. Yep. So um, again, Lori and Big Dick T, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, racking them up. The Pachinko machine is on fire. Yeah, Conrad, of course, he's getting his fair share. I think he gets a surplus of theirs. Like they have so many that they just like. Oh, they farm out some. They farm out some of the points. Okay. To them. Um, so we're looking forward to the wedding. I can't wait for it. Yeah, the countdown's on to the wedding and and CouchCon 2017. Super excited for all that. Super excited to dig into this pilot. I say we do that right now. Now, Andrew, are you a captain of a plane, or are you just like, are you doing? I'm like retired. A, you're re- retired. I have retired. Retired, such a young age. I know. How did you make all your millions? Ah, uh, babysitting. Wow. You just take the babies up on a plane, and then the that's the, right. The pressure it's, from the it's cabin. Like, it's like the Jimboree thing, you know, the bus. Yeah. With the thing. It's sad, but we fly. The plane on the bus yeah. goes around. Exactly. And around. I got you. You know the vomit comment. It's just you know, we just get someone to hose it out at the end of every. So I, I imagine that's like you have high end clients, and right? Yeah. That's probably a pretty expensive it, venture. It can be. It can be very expensive. Wow. wow. Okay. That's I, honestly we're, that's brilliant. We're very far from retiring. Yeah, we are. We did not take the career path we should have. Maybe we can get. Yeah. Some, can you take your headphones off just for a second? Do you think maybe we can like ask him later for a loan and see if he's got any money? Well, yeah. until we get Pi- Couch Pilots International kicked right, off, right. I we, think we're going to need a little scratch. Right. So because we're getting the we're getting Air Force One painted with our logo mm-hmm. on it, yeah. And I'm, I mean, we're already in the red. We don't even have enough okay. to print off the tickets for Couch. I, we're on the same page. Okay, we'll right. hit him up for some cash. Okay, Andrew, go ahead and put your. Sorry about that. This, uh, it's okay. I mean, you know the uh, the airplane side of it, but there's some like podcasting no, sure, technical sure, stuff sure, we have to figure sure. out. Sorry. There's things that's got to be figured out. So, uh, Couch Pilots is the name of the show. Um, so sorry. <laughs> it's an amazing. Um, the, the, the one-stop shop for garbage TV that had one episode, and, and now you get to hear us idiots talk about it. What do you think about that? It's great. It's a great time. It's Good. the best time I've ever had. Good. Today we discuss the pilot episode of Boo Boo Runs Wild from the Year of Our Lord 19 Ad 99. So, girls, get ready to pull those shirts up. That's right. Great year. Great year. Great what year, year was it? 19 ad 99. <coughs> Whoops. Hey, I remember we used to party like it was 1999. Yeah, R.I.P. Too R-I-N-C-E. Soon. Too soon. Hey, you got to have faith. <laughs> Way too soon. <laughs> Whoa, buddy. Whoa. At, at the time of this tape, Wham! that was yesterday. <laughs> What's it? Uh, I read something that George Michael died um, peacefully. Yeah, peacefully. Yeah. Having at, a, at 56. No, 53. 53. He's only 53. Yeah, he's like, and he had like, a, what, two years older than you? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Ouch. That's good. Um, but you don't, uh, you don't die peacefully at home at 53 from a heart condition. This is uh, I'm in, When you're not married and have no children and no significant other, uh, you're just by yourself. With that's peaceful? All, that's peaceful. <laughs> uh, if he's asleep. Okay. 
Um, I assumed it was uh, drug induced. Well, I've not heard. It's gonna it's gonna come out that it was drug induced, but everybody's gonna ignore that and still say R.I.P. Yeah. Well, I mean, he hasn't been relevant for a long time. He's he's more known for his sex capades, and not to be confused with Disney's ice capades. Right. Right. Um, don't. Don't, don't want to confuse those two. We can get legality problems. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, but 1999. Yeah, I, great year. Great Andrew, year. 1999. I don't even remember what the hell I was doing in 1999. Great year. Great year. I tell you right now, it's a great year. Sure, you say so. But I, you know what? You may not remember. I'm gonna I'm gonna send a little juice your way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, try to get us back in time, a digital time machine, if you will. And take us back to the year 19 ad 99 to talk about some things that happened in popular culture. Maybe it'll put your mind in that in that time frame. A new U.S. gun control bill rejected for new controls going too far and new controls not going far enough. Control. Yep. Um, you live in Texas. I do. Does, Guns- anyone, does anyone ever mess with you? No. Okay. No. Not yet. Um, okay. what, are, what are your thoughts on steers and or queers? Love them both. Nice. Good steak with a nice kitchen. Great answer. <laughs> <laughs> High five that. Um, do you have a gun? No, I do not. Are, are you being pressured by your neighbors to get a gun? No, I have not been. Have you tried to trap any wild pigs? Wild pigs only with my bumper. Nice. Do you see wild pigs? Boars? Uh, boars, no, but there is a road not far from our place where it, you can't. it's dangerous to drive on at night. The speed limit jumps up to 80 miles an hour and... I believe it was my wife told me it was last year. Some uh, poor family was taken out by a, a wild pig. Taken out? Holy yeah. cow. No, like with a gun? Eight, yes. <laughs> Damn, this pig is, jumped in the this middle This is of the where road. these gun control oh, bills what? come into play. Thank you. Damn. These goddamn swine That's, getting their hands on semi automatic weapons. That's why the gun control laws in Texas are so loose. Um, we got to fight back. Right? Right. you got to protect yourself. you got to protect yourself from the damn Before things. you wreck yourself and the vehicle, <laughs> um, I will say this. Um, this is we don't know what we're doing. No, this is nineteen ad ninety nine. It's coming on twenty years ago. We still don't and know we're, we're still doing. having the same debate every time someone goes to a mall and decides, decides they want to mow down everyone inside of Claire's boutique. Right. Sure. And, you know, and we pride ourselves on not being a political show. So much pride. And you know, we don't talk about religion as much talk- as I want to. You always say no. Right. And I say, Jason, no politics, no religion, and no her. I said I want to talk about my Lord and Savior, and you say put Dude. a goddamn lid on it. I, ain't nobody got time for that. People are here to enjoy themselves. Yeah. All right, guns. Good, bad, ugly. I, yeah. To me, I just think we're never going to figure it out. It, it, I don't think it has anything. We're never going to get it. Never going to get it. A woo, 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 woo. I would like to say that it has a lot more to do with um, the the a person's mental capacity or psychological uh, behavior than it does the weapon itself. Would you th- Would you give me a gun? Absolutely not. Would you give Andrew a gun? Is he from Texas? Yes. I ain't messing with him. All right. And would I give you a gun? Um, would you Would you give me a gun? I would have to assume you would not, in which case you would be correct because I would do terrible things with a gun. And that's one of the problems that we've had as um, Sky Cops is we don't carry guns. No. So when we pull people yeah. over, we roll them down the window and show them our badge, a lot of times they don't – they don't – they don't – they don't – we're, we're pretty much just flesh-covered targets, is what we are. We walk around like uh, uh, bobbies in the uh, UK, right? We, we have no guns. We just have uh, sticks, and we politely ask. And, and honestly, I have been shot once or twice. Oh, yeah. But uh, thanks to modern medicine, I've made full recovery. Nice. Thank you, modern medicine. Walmart continues its worldwide expansion plans when it buys the UK supermarket ASDA, or as soon as possible. Them sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. That was that was a long time ago, seventeen years ago, and now look at Walmart. There's one on every corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, they pay their employees three dollars an hour, right. but they only have two registers open. Yeah, and they're the largest shopping place in the world with two registers. You know that that is the funny thing to me is um, I go to a Walmart here locally, and I I, I genuinely believe I think I want to say it's about forty lanes. I think that's a fair sure. assessment. Forty lanes, and you're right. I will go there sometimes, and there will be. Four lanes open. And, and how and, do they do that? And two of them are retirees. Yeah, t- retired old ladies who are barely even able to lift that gallon of milk to scan it across. The One thing. of them is someone who who's someone they just woke them up. Right, so they just <laughs> woke up. And then the other one is someone who's been there for 25 years but still can't figure out how to take partial cash payment and partial debit pr- payment. Or to get the the security lock thing off of the video game. It's tough. Oh it's gosh. tougher than you that think. Is rough. <laughs> I think we 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 hit a. Yeah, are you a video game guy? I am. Yeah, what's the, what's the latest video game you're playing? I 
right now I'm playing a game called Deathwing. It's on Deathwing. Steam, yeah. Oh, Steam, okay. Steam is the PC streamable stuff you can That's do? That's correct, it is. Nice. <sighs> Love Walmart, though. As, as much as they rape us in uh, our own beholes. We still go. We still go. Like, like sheep to the slaughter. The West Nile virus first appears in the U.S. Do you remember that? Yeah, wasn't that supposed to kill us? Everything is supposed to kill, kill us, us all day, every day. Yeah, I thought that one was really going to get us. No, that's the one you put your I, money on? Yeah, I was in the pool, <laughs> the office pool, you know, that was that one. <clears throat> I, I feel like the, the media every year comes up with some reason for us to all die. Yeah. And the West Nile, I was a little scared of that because I love camping. H1V1. And then you get that from a, you get that from fucking a monkey, right? Mm-hmm. I thought that was Ebola. Oh, you get that too. Get that one too. That's from Stay. fucking a monkey's uncle, though. So, fair enough. <laughs> Monkey uncle, pucker. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, every year, swine it's something. flu, swine oh, flu, avian yeah. flu, avian flu. Every year, it's something. Bono, Bono, shit. The Voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have never gotten swine flu. I've never been mad cow. Um, I've never been mad cow in the morning. <laughs> I've never. Um, None of that shit. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know anyone who has. It's all it's all bullshit, right? For, bullshit. For me, I'm a straight flu guy, straight sinus infection guy. If it ain't one of those two, I'm not doing it. I don't give a shit about that. Those are the only illnesses you'll accept. Right. Every once in a while, throw a little bronchitis in that bitch, I'm ready to go. So, so you're not worried about Zika then? Oh, yeah, Zika too. Zika's pretty bad. No, I don't eat lead paint. <laughs> so I'm fine. What, do you that have, wasn't a, that do you have a message for all of our frequent flyers out there who do eat lead paint and, and where Zika is a, a very real threat to them? Yes. You need to make sure that you urinate constantly on a regular basis. Watch for blood in your urine. Maybe some which, paint thinner? Just, just the thought of blood in my urine scares the shit out of me. Um, but, yeah, just, I mean, eat them in small bites. Don't take the big flakes. Crumble them up. Make a dust. And you know, put it over your lasagna. Moderation whatever. in everything. Exactly. Right? Everything, everything's going to kill you. Podcast is going to kill us. Oh, uh, Lord willing. My mind right now, set in 1999. Whatever happens after this, I am ready to accept, receive, process, and regurgitate based on the year 19 ad 99. I don't know about you guys. I'm there. I'm, I'm there. And when I rate this at the end of the show, it's going to be no prejudice of 2017. Right. Or, you know, no, as, as it should be. Like, as of right now, I don't even know who R. Kelly is. Right. Uh, let's, um, let's, let's take a look at what? No, R. Kelly was, was relevant dumb. at the time. I know. It was not. Once I said I was like, that's, I meant to say, like, Chase or Chain. Or Remember whatever. when he said that um, he believed he could fly and then he <clears throat> peed on that little girl? Oh, love peeing on little girls. Whoa, jeez. Oh, Too sorry. Much I thought that was Drunkle Andy. How old were you in 19 Ad 99? This, this comes into play, too, when we, we try to process these things. I tell you right now, I was 18. <laughs> then I was 24. There you go. That helps. Uh, Andrew, Andrew? I was 19. Wow. I am old. Oh, no. Actually, fuck that. I wasn't 19. Gee, man, I was 20, 23. 23. 23 so that, that makes 24. you currently 38, 39? 40. Oh, you're 40 now. Okay. 40. Yeah, 41. 41. 41. Huh? <laughs> Captain Marissa, sir, why did we choose to watch Babu Runs Wild? Simple three criteria. A, it had to be a failed pilot that did not go to series. There was only one made. It was either shown or not shown, but it didn't go to series. Number two, it had to be readily available. The internet has all a vast, a vast wormhole of endless things, but if it ain't on there, we ain't watching Forget it. Forget it. And three, it had to be free. Yeah. Because we are broke and we're not paying for it. Sometimes producers send us... You yeah. know, copies of stuff, which is great. And sometimes other pilots lend us money <laughs> and so we can pay for things. Yeah, like ones that are retired from... A- uh, gotta go! No, we we're, we're, hold, we're, on, hold on, hold on. We're, oh, we're not even halfway through. We're just strapped in. We haven't even got off the ground yet. You can't leave. We need you. Where can you find Financially. Boo Boo Runs Wild? You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice. And then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes. If it's red, stay away. Yeah, yeah. That's as the old saying goes. Rolls off your tongue. If it's red, stay away. If it's blue, why why don't you click on it, guy? <laughs> Just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> um, so click on our show notes or go to YouTube, and you know what to do. Tube. Nice. Remember, remember, um, remember when I started saying that? Yeah. And I like saying that now. And I wish I would have stopped you back then, but now it's too late. <laughs> it's a staple. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Andrew, hold on. 
getting up in the air, and there are no golden cones to speak of, and now I am positive it was my fault that I left him on the corner of Clark and Wilson. Clark. Jesus, tap dance Price. I'll write that down. Clark and Please Wilson. write that down. There's little we can do from the air now, but... That was uh, four days ago. Uh, boy. Uh, I don't even... I'm surprised we got off the ground. Without the, That's only the second time we've ever lifted off. Because the one time where he didn't come into work, remember when you called him, he was all pissed off, he thought it was the wrong day? Yeah. Summary of the pilot. Boo Boo gets fed up with the rules imposed on bears by humans and decides to return to his wild roots. Great summary. That summarizes this cartoon perfectly. And you know what we always say here on Couch Pilots, Andrew, is that a great summary properly summarizes the show that it is Being talking summarized. about. Right. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This yeah. guy this guy gets it. I don't have to explain yeah, it to does. him. Right. I don't have to explain sure it to him. I can figure out what a summary is. <laughs> figure this out. Interesting facts. Here is oh. a... Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting facts is a section of the show where um, we, we, we watch the show. It's already in our brains. Right. And now we pull back the curtain. We take a look behind it and say, what are some things you wouldn't know from just watching the, the pilot? What are some interesting th- or some, some facts, some would say, that people wouldn't know just by simply viewing it? Sure. And we, we've named this the Conrad Rule. Mm-hmm. It's the easiest way to explain the Conrad Rule. Right. And, Andrew, I'll explain it to you in case you, you're not for sure is – this, the name of the segment is Interesting Facts. It's not for us to judge whether it's interesting or not. If you were to sit here and he was going to give you a fact, don't say, that's interesting, or, oh, I really like that fact. It's, no qualifiers, don't, No qualifiers, because it doesn't matter. And you, you, when you get home tonight, you snuggle up in bed with your wife, or the hotel, I guess, because you're from Texas, but uh, or, or your mom's house. Um, <laughs> um don't tell her about the interesting facts. Don't say, hey, this I heard this interesting fact. Just don't do it. It's called the Conrad Rule. Okay. And so just, you know, keep them to yourself. You can, you know, percolate them inside you however you want. Sure. What's What goes on in your mind is your business, and we're not going to get involved in it. Yeah. But it, it, you cannot talk about it if the fact is interesting. And it's really just about saving calories in the end because – these facts, nothing you say, none of your opinions, it doesn't matter. And it's the same for us. Blake and I have to ad- adhere to the same rule. The facts are set in stone. Go ahead and talk about them all you want. It's not going to change anything. Sure, it's they are what they are. That's exactly right. This guy, he gets it. It was that's made why, by... That's the, how he's the top dick of the class. That's right. That's how he become a valid big dick tectorian. Um, it was made by the Ren and Stimpy show creator John Crickfalusi and his company, Spumco. Okay. You know Spumco? Um, if they did for an Stimpy, I do. They, they definitely did. They, they've done some stuff since then. Um, but yes, that is his company, and they made this show. Okay. Fact. Okay. Fact. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, originally, this show was built on the back of his back oh burps. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> originally aired on Cartoon Network on September 24th, 1999, along with A Day in the Life of Ranger Smith, a similar Yogi Bear-themed special. Uh, the- no, go ahead. No. I, I know you weren't about to comment like a, like some sort of adjective, but go ahead. I just I didn't know there was a, a, another one to go with this. That's what I that's what I was going to say. Whoops, there was more. This show is built on the back of his back <clears throat> Um, yeah, you know, there's to me this was a, a a pilot that didn't go any further, but there was maybe another a pilot along with it that we can investigate at a different date. But as far as that goes. Fact. Fact. This short film is dedicated to veteran a- animator Ed Benedict, character designer for the Yogi Bear show and other Hanna-Barbera properties of the 1950s and 1960s. Mm. Okay, this show is Whoops. built on the back of his back burps. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whew. There's uh, a lot of facts here that are... The great thing about facts, the, the section, is that they're they're not controversial. Right. It's just they are what they are. Yep. End of interesting facts. It seemed like you were... Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, it, I, I, I'm breathing. I could, have, I could have had another 50 facts there. You couldn't have taken it. No, <laughs> I would not have no. made it. I'm going to leave it there. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. This is where people respond to us on Twitter. Yep. As, as the theme goes. So, as always, we take a look at who created the show, who wrote the show, who directed the show, who starred in it, and we contact those people 
They say this is if super- they're alive. We yeah. don't contact them if they're not alive. So no seances. Well, I have a Ouija board that I, that's something I kind of do personally. Sure. Um, and my response is there. I do not necessarily broadcast because it's not the, the dark side does not want that to be. Do they have a Twitter option with Ouija boards now? Uh, yeah, hashtag. Um, hashtag on yeah, the board. Yeah, there's a hashtag on the board. They added that in, in uh, I think, 2014. Um, first person we contacted and in response was Gabe Swar. Uh, I like that name, Gabe Swar. Great name. Uh, he was a, an assistant animator slash cleanup artist, and uh, he, he he worked on stuff such as Dexter's Laboratory okay. and The Ripping Friends. Now, I like Dexter's Laboratory. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, I think that did very well. It was, it was one of the first early uh, Cartoon Network original shows that did well. Um, the Ripping Friends is another Spumco production made by John K. John Chris Felucci. He's often known as John K because his last name's a clusterfuck. Um, well, it is, and he goes. That's why he goes by K. Uh, but The Ripping Friends is a, a very bizarre show, and uh, this guy worked for him. And you'll notice that across the board, kind of a lot of with these, a lot of these people that we contacted through Twitter, there are people who had worked on a lot of similar projects, just like regular actors and directors and in, in live action things. People say, "Hey, I know that guy. I know he's capable. I like working with him. I'm going to bring him on here." Same thing with, apparently in the animated world. Mm-hmm. A lot of people like to work with people they know and work well with and know they can do a good job. That's, and th- this is no different. That's the way I am with sex. I like to, you know, know them and work well with them. You like to go back to the same well over and over again? Over and over again. And then, but in this case, it's an ink well because they're drawing, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and so we contacted Gabe, and I was like, hey, have you got anything interesting you want to add? And he says, sure. I said, great. Hit us up on our email or Twitter. And he said, okay. He, 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 he did email us today. He did, he did email us. He said he had some family stuff going. So honestly, uh, we appreciate him getting back to us. And if he does write to us in the future, uh, we will definitely talk about it. But here we were kind of uh, a stalwart, right? Mm-hmm. This plane's got to go. That's right. Another guy um, that contacted uh, or we contacted and got back to us was Vincent Waller, and he was a storyboard artist. And he's done he's worked with John Kay on such things as Red and Stimpy. He's also worked on the legendary cartoon The Tick, as well as one of the um, Adult Swim original shows. Like uh, as far as the original lineup goes, Harvey Birdman. So this guy's been around. He's got plenty of experience under his belt. And I said, hey, anything interesting you would like to add? And he says, doing scene setups was a lot of fun. Also, watching John and the gang work in, in the jujitsu into episode was fun. So we watched the show, and there was some fighting in the show. I wouldn't mm-hmm. necessarily call it jujitsu. I think he was just talking about the way that they worked and, sure, and their sure. art form and how they performed. Like us. You and I, we often call it what we do here jujitsu. Oh, yeah. Naked jujitsu. That's right. Um, so thank you so much to Gabe Suar and Vincent Waller for contacting the show. We super duper appreciate it. Now we're gonna take a quick commercial break. We're gonna listen to a, a promo for one of my favorite shows, the Lobo Podcast. Are you sick of spoiled white people and Donald Trump bringing you the news you could care less about? Are you sick of trolling the interwebs for penis-related news only to end up flaccid? Do you lust for Florida only the way a mother lover can? Then look no further than Fakakta Comedy Funhouse's Low Blow Podcast with Adam Z and Dave Rowan. Streaming live every week at lowblowpodcast.net and available for download Thursdays at fcfnetwork.com. Appropriately inappropriate. Oh! Oh. Love that oh. Boy, I tell you what, if I could snip that and make it my ringtone, I would. I, I can do that for you. I don't really, I, I mean, I don't really Having a gay, imitated Jew, old lady, perfect. That's about the best you're going to get. If I was, if I was going to go gay, I'll mm-hmm. say this. I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. Yeah, I've heard if I was going to go gay, yep. Dave would be the gay guy I would go with. Yep, absolutely. Um, I mean, a butthole's a butthole, I guess. I mean, does it, um, I'm not going to be fucking their face. Yeah, Okay. I, I got nothing to add. I, yeah, I don't have. I mean, he, just, he pretty much said it all. Yes. Low Blow Podcast out of Chicago, Illinois, talking about the news that uh, that no one else dares to. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers have known each other for a long time. They've, uh, I think, Adam, at least Adam by himself, has been doing it for oh, like eight years, maybe. And Adam got a new mixing board for Christmas. So his stuff's going to sound more crisper and clean than ever. God bless the Low Blow Podcast. When, when Dave goes, oh, it'll probably come. It'll reach out and grab you when you're listening. It'd be like 4K. 4KOs. 4K. 4KOs. 4HK. 4HKOs. The heartbreak kid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's break down the pile of this ep- of the uh, the pilot. Boo Boo Runs Wild. It starts off, and, I, and honestly, I love how it starts off because it is, it's is—it's got that classic orchestra style. It feels like something out of the 60s. Um, it's got that, that title card up front, Ranger Smith cartoon, even right. though he was – just a, a seemingly a small part of it is pretty much fixated on Yogi and Boo Boo, primarily Boo Boo, 
but they they labeled it as a Ranger Smith cartoon, and they had that that orchestra playing in the background. It really took me back sure. in time. Oh yeah, it was just like watching um, like a seventies, early eighties cartoons. And that's one thing is like with those cartoons is you see you, they put all the people involved in it in the beginning of it. Yeah, and that's yeah. very rare, and that's what's yeah. cool about it because uh, those those guys are so stuck on themselves. They're like, hey, people are going to turn this off at the end. I'm going to put my name in the front. Yeah, you're going to find front. out right now. So um, the beginning kind of scans over the woods, and what you're seeing is all the different trees just with ha- hammered and nailed in these signs. No shedding, no tunes, no dumping, do not swarm, no shaving, no fawning, no bulgy, eye- feigny eyeballs. Ranger Smith is posting all sorts of signs throughout the entire woods. Right, and what I find interesting is he, you know, his job is to conserve the area as well as the animals. Right, right. Uh, but he's sticking nails in trees. Well, mm-hmm. what about the horse? The moose's ass. Oh, is it a moose? I thought yeah. it was a horse. <laughs> the moose's ass. And he's like, hey! <laughs> oh, that's right. It sounded like uh, another very famous moose. Oh, which moose? Oh, uh, uh, Bullwinkle? Bullwinkle. Nice. Yeah. Do you have a Bullwinkle impression? I do not. <laughs> actually dislike the moose greatly. Oh, wow, well, really? You're right. But anti-moose? I'm anti-moose. How about squirrel? Uh, squirrel's okay. <laughs> okay. It's pretty tasty, actually. Uh, and, and we're, oh, boy. I, have you really had squirrel before? I have, yes. I have not. What does it taste like? I would love to say it tastes like chicken, but it doesn't. It just kind of has a unique taste. Okay. Is this Ga- gamey? gamey? It can be. It can be gamey. A lot of depends on how it's prepared. One time I saw that Bear Grylls eat frozen squirrel brain because he's a disgusting person. Gross. Um, how, where do you fall on Hanna-Barbera? It's not my preferred a cartoon. I watched a lot of it when I was a kid mm-hmm. uh, on USA Cartoon Network. They had everything from Captain Caveman, and you could you could hear voices very similar to things like Captain Caveman, sure. and Jabberjaw. Great, it was uh, USA Express, uh, Cartoon Express. Cartoon Express. Remember, yep. we talked about this last time. It had that it had that train, yep. Express yep. train, um, and like there would be shots of like a, a little girl fishing, and she saw the train, and then she just pulled up her pole and ran Starts after running it. after yeah. And in, in that way, it reminds me of. And I know you, I know you don't want to get religion involved in the show, so I'm, I, I want to apologize. But this reminds the the USA train is almost like a um, a metaphor for Jesus Christ, is what I would oh, like man. to say. As as he's tr- going down the tracks, Jesus would pick up apostles, and they would say, "Hey, come with me right now. Follow me." Just like those kids would follow the USA Express. And then get eaten by Jabberjaw. And then they would proceed to almost immediately get <laughs> eaten by Jabberjaw, just like the 12 Saints did. <laughs> um, I myself, as we've talked about, is I'm a Warner Brothers guy. I think Hanna-Barbera can suck a big fat cock. Um, they're, they're terrible and uh, garbage, uh, very cheap animation. And to me, it bugs Bunny all the way. Bugs Bunny. Bugs yes. Bunny for life. I that- still can't. No, still cannot watch a Coyote and Roadrunner cartoon without laughing my ass um, off. Of course. BFL. It's the best. BFL, that's right. I, what does that mean? Bunny for life. Nice. Bunny for life. So um, it goes over to Yogi and Boo Boo. They're sleeping in the same bed, which, which is the, one of the first of many homoerotic things. Thank you. The show. You know what? I wrote homoerotic on this four times. Yeah. And I'm glad we're on the same page. That, that is a standard fare for John Kay and his um, just try really like that. He got fired from Ren and Stimpy. Like he's the creator. He voiced Ren for the first season or two before Billy West took over both roles. Um, but he was always pushing the limit. He was always making it weirder, a little more bizarre, uh, the little uh, whispers of sexuality. Mm-hmm. And that, and, that, and the, I think he probably was the la- the reins were loosened on him a little bit for Boo Boo Runs Wild, so he was able to kind of more adamantly put that in there. Right. So Yogi said, you know, <laughs> Boo was like, "Hey, Yogi, get up! It's." It's noon. Is and it noon already? Is it noon? It's too soon for noon. Too soon for noon. And I, I was the same way. I said, "Why are they sleeping in the same bed? That ca- that cave is huge." Well, it's, maybe beds are hard to come by in the woods. Well, you can see that it was just you know like something I would construct. It was just you know boards were not level and a bunch of hay, perhaps. Hay. Hey, 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 hey. Um, they, they then head out and run into Ranger Smith, and he says, "Hey." You guys got to put some clothes on. You know the rules of the woods. You got to yeah. have one, at least one article of, of, of people clothes on. Right, and he's like, "Let me look up the in the in the rule book uh, about bare naked bears." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've heard of the bare naked ladies, but yeah, bare naked bears. Oh, yeah, it's brown. Um, during the scene too, there's a lot of like like breaking the fourth wall and looking at the camera, right. yeah. which again is another staple of John K. I love it. I love when. Ren and Stimpy, or in this case, Boo Boo or Yogi, is looking at and addressing the audience directly. Sure. And already you can see there's not a lot of dialogue. There's not a lot of back and forth talk. There's there's the <laughs> necessity talk to get the story going. But there's a lot of sounds. And like, 
<laughs> in like when they're coming out of the cave both times because they you know they come out and they're just walking funny and they're staring at you and they're just walking funny and then it's just a lot of sounds that you know <laughs> yeah it, it, very useless sounds. <clears throat> So they yeah he sends them back. They put on their classic. He's got like a collar with a tie. Yogi does, and he's got that hat. And then Boo Boo's got the bow tie. No, were the were the colors different? Uh, yeah, the colors were different. The colors because were different. Yogi okay. Yogi Bear's hat was green, I believe. I thought it was green too. Okay. And this one, it was what was it? Was it blue or purple? A p- purple or pink? Well, or and something. I wonder why that is. I mean, obviously, uh, when you when you look at Cartoon Network where this was aired, they have a lot of affiliations with Hanna Barbera. So I wonder why they didn't go with the same colors. I, I doubt it was a legal thing. Yeah, because so. Uh, Yogi had a green hat and tie, and then Boo Boo had a blue bow tie. Yeah, when I was watching it, I might, it kept, what I kept coming back to was that whether this was, you know, did they have licensure to do this, or is this sort of an homage, you know? Well, uh, again, the, uh, comedy, or Cartoon Network so, works so closely with Hanna-Barbera. They use a lot of their own properties, uh, especially like with Space Ghost is a great example. Uh, sure. Horrible, horrible uh, old cartoon from the 60s that they said, hey, look, this is something we could probably get really cheap. Let's turn it into a ridiculous talk show, and they did. They they use it exactly as 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 it was there, but they took that animation and turned it into a different format. So they have they have the rights, I think, to work with Hanna Barbera. So why they chose different colors that's beyond me, and definitely not in the interesting facts section. Definitely not. So we can say whether that was interesting or not. Correct. Uh, so the you know of course the ranger is very disappointed in Boo Boo, and he wants to tell how he's like I can expect this from Yogi, mm-hmm. but I'm so disappointed in Boo Boo, and I'm just like. This is a bear. That's a lot of that's a lot to put on a little kid bear. Yeah, is Boo Boo a kid though, or is he just a short bear? I, based on what happens later, I would like to think that he's a, gr- a fully grown I would bear. Certainly hope so. Or that is somebody has <laughs> explaining to do. And they're, while the ranger was letting them have it too, their hands were like covering their their, their ball privates. area. Yeah, because yeah. like, but yet they came out and they didn't have anything over their ball area either. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Yogi and Boo Boo, you know. Start to go for a walk. Yeah. Because what else are you going to fucking do? You're a bear, right? So they take off walking, and Ranger Smith, again, addresses the audience. Right. right that's where the fourth wall, he breaks the fourth wall on that yep. one. It was like, hey, this is my plan. I, uh, I wanna, I'm putting up all these signs. Yogi's going to disobey, and finally I'll have him exactly right where I want him. Because they're, they're always, I mean, if you know the cartoons. It's always Yogi. He's trying, to, he's trying to get Yogi in trouble. Yeah, he's always trying to stop him from snatching a picnic basket, right, and get him kicked nice out. Nice imitation. Oh, oh, thank you. That's I've been working on it. But there was never, in the cartoons, there was never a real sense of menace from the ranger. It was just, I'm going to stop him from getting that picnic Right, basket. it was just a job. This was dark. Like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to set you him. up. Like, like he's, he's try, The ranger is trying to set Yogi up to exactly. get him in trouble. And, it, and he only gets darker later, for sure. But yeah, the original uh, Ranger Smith was a... Kind of like a Boy Scout. He was a very honest, right. straightforward, really trying to keep the park neat and tidy, where Yogi was this Dennis the Menace uh, character just causing like playful mischief. Basically. Do you remember who played the ranger in the Yogi Bear movie? Uh, oh, yes, I do. Uh, Tom Kavanaugh. My, my, Mike and Tom eat snacks. Yes, God, that's right. And there's a movie? Oh, yeah, it's a good movie. I doubt that. No, it's good. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's where they join live, live action and animation together. Oh, sort of like the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. It's always a success. Anytime they get it, it's always <laughs> millions of dollars are made. Space Jam. So the boys enter the woods. The boys being Yogi and Boo Boo, and they they then want they want to do what bears do by ripping some bark off of a tree, and then Ranger Smith like pokes his head through the tree. Yeah, this tree ha- this tree has a huge vagina hole on it. <laughs> I mean, it looks. I mean, there was you know most time you oh there's a lot of trees are hollowed out, and you know you can see a thousand of them out in the nature. None of them are this. Wide gaping diamond shaped you, pussy hole. You've never seen a vagina tree. I tell you what. No. I tell you what, Captain I would fuck Andrew. It. I was gonna say that's exactly right. If if there were trees out there, plentiful trees with <clears throat> vagina holes, there'd be dudes out there fucking it. If there's a hole to be had sex with, guys will find it. Right. And for some, um, you know, Boo Boo is is doing the classic. It's the classic Ren and Stimpy. Though this is a classic Ren and Stimpy where it's a close up of the arm and the arm just extends with yeah. sound. Yeah. It, that's classic. And he goes to scratch it, and that's when the ranger pops his head out of this vagina tree. And he's like, "You can't do that! Don't don't you read the signs? You can't rip the bark off the tree." And then and then he stands up to leave, and he takes the whole tree with him, which right. is funny. And and you just mentioned Ren and Snippy, as we've done a couple times already, but this is the first time in this show. Obviously, the animation is very similar because it's the same sure. guy, but this is the first time in the show. Because um, Boo Boo starts to lose his mind. He's like, "I can't do simple bear stuff," and I say, "Boo Boo is the Ren of this duo." 
because you got the big fat Stimpy kind of being the soft, gooey, dumb guy who's always trying to like calm things down or just be the, the kind of the voice of reason where Ren's the guy who's always flipping his shit. And then when you see Boo Boo make that transformation from uh, <laughs> mild mannered bear just trying to get along to I've been pressed upon too many times and I'm about to lose my mind, he turns into the Ren character here. Right. And it's a, it takes a long time. There's a lot of noises and twitching and body morphing <laughs> going on just for this little bear to become what he is, a bear. But he's pissed as hell, and I don't blame him. Um, he's like, I can't take this anymore. Yeah. And I say that every day. Yeah. Every day I wake up, I look at myself in the mirror and go, I can't take this every day. Are there ever close-ups of your face? And yeah, like- and it goes. <laughs> what does it sound like when you reach for your alarm clock? <laughs> Now, Andrew, were you a fan of Ren and Snippy? I was not ever a fan of Ren and Snippy. Because, it, because you had seen it and not liked it or just never I saw it? I had seen it. Um, I, it just the, the animation style to me was just more kind of a gross-out style, you know, yeah. which, is, which is fine. I, re- I mean, it's whatever. Yeah. Different people like different things. But it, it, I hey. also always had kind of an issue with the noises that they're talking about where, yeah. you know, where half the show is just fourth wall breaking where they're staring at the audience with their tongue out looking like an idiot making funny noises. It's, to me, that's yeah. – some people find it funny, and that's fine. It was just never my thing. I want to say I was 12 or so when that show really was around, yeah. maybe a little younger than that. And – it just caught me at the right time. Right. Sure. I, I'm a huge Ren and Stimpy fan. I, I love John Kay. I actually, I, usually I send people a message to, hey, this is Cou-, on Twitter. I said, hey, this is Couch Pilots. This is what we do. I say, if you want to contribute something great, I send John Kay specifically something else saying, uh, Ren and Stimpy <laughs> really helped inform my comedic sensibilities. Sure. Um, I thought it was a great show. I still watch it to this day. I watch it with my daughter every once in a while. So I, being a huge fan, immediately started to draw parallels to that show. Um, about halfway through this one. Right, and I also think that it has, with, with me and Andrew, we're both similar age, and so maybe we had we had already gone past that sure, sense of humor. So. Yeah, right. but when you're about the age, about, I would say 11 to 14 or 15. Because we're already thinking about titties. Yeah, I'm not thinking about titties. Uh, you're, you're, you're six years younger than us, you're not thinking about titties. I'm not thinking, thinking about titties? No. You're thinking about slobber jokes and pulling people's yeah, wankers. That's right, I love that's pulling right. people's wankers. I didn't think about titties for a few more years after that. So this this Ren and Stimpy caught me at the right time, and, and again, just kind of made me a lifelong fan of anything that John K does. So um, again, Boo Boo loses his shit, uh, and then just you know, it, like I said, it's a long transformation with a lot of grunting and slobber, and then he goes into you know he just goes into the wilderness, and Yogi is like, uh, yeah, he'll be back. You know what I mean? There's there's they they, they there's a tree thing, but that doesn't really basically. Yo, he's like, ah, he'll be fine. He's, he's, like, he's like, don't go. But he doesn't like. He doesn't try to grab him or anything. Right, right. Just, he doesn't try to like, you know, put something on his tongue because that's what you do when somebody transform. No, no, no. You 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 put the you press their tongue down so they don't bite it. Oh, I see. Okay. Boo boo uh, climbs that's a tree. That's a seizure joke that nobody got. I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> but in the old days, when I was first trained in CPR. You were supposed to put something in their mouth to hold their tongue down so they didn't yeah. bite it during a seizure. Yeah, I don't think they do that anymore. But no, about five years later, they're like, oh, no, no, no. Stop doing you don't that. want to do that. I'm like, well, what have you been teaching us that for forever? Idiots. Um, Boo Boo goes on a, you know, on, a, on a hunt and he finds a picnic basket. And again, this is, like you said, this is just a lot of sounds. There's, yep. By this time, Boo Boo will no longer speak in his cute little voice. He just grunts and growls and spits and slobbers. He's got a lot of slobber. His uh, his lips look a little weird. They're like kind of he just his eyes are glazed over and big and he he does. He just looks like a dumb feral bear. And he finds his picnic basket and he sees a sign. And for some reason there's a there's a a, a, a dash line from his eyes to the sign. Like we're not gonna know that's what he sees. <laughs> and it's like, you know, don't feed the bears. And that just angers him even more. He pulls food out, he throws him over at his buddy bears who it's the only time you see them. They're yeah. hiding in the bushes. I, I'm not gonna. Lie. I did laugh a lot when he pulled out the giant turkey leg, chicken leg, whatever the hell that was. Oh yeah. Because honestly, the way he looked at it, it looked like he was about to fuck it. <laughs> oh, it, it you know what? That was probably in the original script. <laughs> <laughs> um, it cuts back over to Yogi, and he's alone, and he's wandering around, just con- kind of concerned for his friend, not not knowing. He's never acted like this before. And isn't this when he's walking through like this bushes, this bushes, yeah. you know, these very heavy bushes that he just. Whoosh, 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 I was like, this, let's, you know, this is a little much. Yeah, he, uh, John Kay is always very heavy on all the sound effects and the noises. And you're right, the the uh, the lyrics, or not the lyrics, but the uh, the dialogue is is very limited. And then you get a lot of kind of 
uh, close up, like oddly detailed photo or pictures of things. Do you um, think that plays uh, into that? Like these sounds. Do you think it's to irritate the viewer to get them in a a sense of, uh, of just frustration while they're watching these? Uh, I, I think it can if you're not familiar with his work. Like for me, no, knowing that this is what he does usually, mm-hmm. that to me it falls in the line with his sensibility. I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. This is exactly what I want to see. But if you if you're not familiar with his work, yeah, it probably is it, kind of like it'll get under your skin. It'll get under your skin a little bit. That's probably doing it on purpose. You just kind of want the story to progress, but I have to listen to 30 <laughs> minutes of sound right. effects. Right. You know, it's that's exactly right. I mean, it, it's funny. I mean, when you really think about it, it is funny. It's just. There's no like whams or boing or anything like that. No, like it's normal. just breathing. It's, it's just breathing and <sighs> clicking. <sighs> it goes on like five, ten seconds yeah. too long, which can feel like an eternity. Right. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Um, so then, uh, what, what happens next here? Oh, uh, this is where they have boo boos in the forest and uh, just starts ripping um, trees that are alive, and they start to scream. Yeah, they're they're yeah. in. They're being. He's ripping it. Uh, oddly enough, always the ass portion of the tree. Yeah, it's never the this front. This is a or very ass centric cartoon. It truly, truly is. Isn't that very true of most of the Rin and Stimpy stuff? Though, is it, they always seem to every time you, I look, turn it on. There's there's Stimpy's butt. They're not really. Yeah. They're, not, they're not kicking each other in the nuts. They're no, slapping, they're slapping each other in the ass. Butts. Yeah, it's um, Ren and Stimpy weren't clothed, but if they they were around, they'd always had the little two lines indicating their butt. Like very right. predominantly, you could see asses all the time. Uh, and this is and. Me and Andrew kind of talked about it in the captain's lounge about this part coming up. But okay. So Boo Boo uh, shows up at Yogi's girlfriend's house, who is Cindy. I believe her name is Cindy. Oh, yes. Could that's right. her name. That's great. And, you know, she hears Boo Boo scratching the door, opens the door, is like, Boo Boo, what's wrong with you? And goes from a very panicky, scared look to a very erotic, turned on, I want to fuck Boo Boo. Yeah. Because that was he's weird. Yeah. And so she rips off her collar. And puts the she's got pic- like a tutu yeah, thing she, she around like the waist, little, like a little blue tutu thingy that goes. And around she the waist. she knocked oh, she knocked over a picture of Yogi because I think that's his girlfriend, right? right. And he, she knocked that over, so it's facing down. And then it's like, you know what, Boo Boo, I don't know what this is, but I am on board. Right, uh, me and Yogi been dating for like thirty six years, yep. you know. But you know what, I I love this animal instinct. I don't know what's going on, but I'm down. And I tried this. I tried this last night with Molly. I was like, Rawr! and she's like, go to sleep. Oh, a bummer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So, yeah, he does that, and uh, he's drooling at her feet, completely feral. She's so turned on, and then uh, she follows him into the woods. And I'm thinking, we're, I'm, I'm, this is going to get nasty. That's this is thinking. actually where it started, I thought, getting interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where I think things get nasty, you think they get interesting. I just, you know, it, I, like, with, like before with the ranger, when it started getting a little dark there is where it kind of was like, all right, so maybe we're going to see something a little different yeah. here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the ranger didn't pay off till obviously I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit. Oh, boy. But did it the, ever. Uh, you know, when when the girl went feral and next thing you know, boo-boo, and I'm sure we're going to go on to the next point, was when, probably when Yogi finds him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, – I didn't know what he was going to find when he parted well, those What bushes. did he find? Uh, some kind of weird beehive honeycomb <laughs> – Sexcapade. Sexcapade thing that was very odd. But at the same time, there was, was a lot of licking, a lot of tongue, a lot of licking, and they were a lot of tongue. Hands. I'm pretty sure the only way they could have topped that is he would have found Boo Boo plowing her right there. Right. The, you know, that would have been that is the equivalent. Ru- yeah, yeah, I would that, guess that it was. It was pretty. That's funny. cartoon fucking is holding hands, holding hands yeah. with. Like, well, you, you no, gotta just have the honey though. The lick, yeah, the honey. Because yeah, Boo Boo, he hears the noise. He come, he opens the bushes, and yeah, he sees him. Which is my favorite part that they were sitting on a log, staring straight ahead. And holding the holding hands and staring straight at that was the funny part to me. And then yes, they they're licking honey off each other. They've got covered in bees, and they, it, it doesn't bother was, them at all. They're it licking was the bees. Odd, but funny. It was a good payoff for that. <laughs> and uh, Yogi is, it, it is they, like they were fucking. Right. That, that's what that was. Sure. And when Yogi comes across and he sees that, he is immediately heartbroken and angry and terrified, and he starts yelling "home wrecker." The home wrecker. And, and, yes. But he. This is what I found interesting is he goes up to Cindy yeah, it, and yells at her that she's a home wrecker. Did he yeah. smack her? I don't remember him smack. I, oh, I doubt he did. I, okay, I don't think I wasn't sure, but I remember he called her my home wrecker and I was laughing. I turned away for a minute. And I thought I was wondering if he smacked her. Because this to me this is another homocentric that she would be the home wrecker of their okay. gay yeah. their gay relationship. Good catch. That's a guy. I didn't think of it like that. Good catch. <laughs> hey, he's always catching that. I'm always catch I'm always the catcher. Yogi is is so distraught. He uh, he goes through the woods and he goes to Yo- um, Ranger Smith's cabin. And oh, he, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, then um, when Yogi calls 
Cindy a homewrecker. Then a boo boo uh, decides to bite the shit out of his leg. Oh yeah. <laughs> and this is another part was kind of dark and creepy. Yeah, yeah. Is Yogi's running away and through the forest where the you know the trees are all have faces, and then it goes completely like black, yep. and all you see is the is the uh, eyeballs. And, you know, and it was that was kind of a dark kind of like, yep. hey, if you're tripping on acid, this part right now is really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the Couch Pilots' promise. Um, so do, yes, he's, do that acid yeah. only on this part. The, so he goes to uh, the ranger because that's the only like, you know there's not a lot of characters sure. in, in Yogi Bear right so this is the uh, apparently the only other guy he knows and someone he thinks he can trust and go to so he so he knocks on the door of the cabin of, of Ranger Smith and meanwhile during their entire conversation you see Boo Boo kind of like peeking in the window and he's just kind of around <laughs> yeah and you just hear the grunts yeah the grunts <laughs> and um, something I noticed during this is that. Um, Ranger Smith, while he's talking to Yogi, he's moving his head around, but his hat is staying like in the same spot. Oh, right. so I love that shit. It's kind of like the mouse ears on uh, on Mickey. You know how the the mouse ears are always two D <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Well, and also during this conversation, um, Ranger Smith uh, puts his hand on Yogi's leg not, like three not, different yeah, times, saying, not he's once, like, but at least and, you know he's times. like, "We're almost equals now," and I'm just like, "This is you know when I get done fucking you, Alice." It seems very like. Pedophile-y, doesn't it to you? Yeah, like it's like it's it's an older guy trying to take advantage of this person in need. Yeah, yeah it's, definitely. It's, it's, it's I didn't dark. see any honey anywhere though. No, so. <laughs> they're probably safe there. Um, Ranger Smith, chief, then calls on the phone and says, "Hey, there's a rogue bear out there," and he obviously means it's Boo Boo because he's from Star trouble. Wars. There's a rogue bear. Yeah, <laughs> rogue bear from Star Wars, a uh, Star Wars story. Ranger Smith grabs a gun and he says, "I, I know what the the chief or the Ranger manual says." Got to yep. take care of this I bear. Got, I got to take. I got to take this rogue bear out, and he becomes a stormtrooper. That's right. Yo- Yogi uh, is is kind of pushing in front of him, and while Ranger Smith is walking with his, it looks like a big uh, musket. Yeah, musket blunderbuss style. Blund- I was going to say blunderbuss, and he's, yeah, he's from Texas. He knows what a blunderbuss is. <laughs> he was walking with it, and Yogi's kind of got his feet square on the floor, had hands against his chest, but uh, the ranger keeps plowing forward. And this is one of those great things where the scene behind him keeps being the same yeah, over and same over again. Scene. And he said, hey, you guys got such a story history together. You can't go kill him. You, you, you helped deliver him. Um, he nursed you to health when you were sick. Uh, he gave you birthday presents. And Ranger Smith, is. you can see the emotional turmoil in him and trying to decide, I, I, I don't want to, but I have to. I know my duty. Sure, sure. And, you know, uh, how many times of our lives have we been in those, the same situation? Where we've where had we've, to kill someone? Where we've had to kill someone. And the whole time we have the internal struggle of, you know, we we have our duty, you know. That was part of being a sky cop. Being a sky cop, yeah. They're like you know, you're gonna run into situations like this. You know, you're gonna see your ex wife, you know, fucking some guy, mm-hmm. and you know, you got to take him out. You got to take him out. You have no choice. We'll, we'll go back to the manual. The manual always puts you on the right path. Yep. And in this case, um, it, this is where it gets dark once again. Where you, where Ranger Smith says. Um, it would be much easier if it were you. Yeah, right. Like he's Jeez. telling you, I would kill you in a heartbeat, Yogi, if I give given the chance. It was super easy. You wouldn't even have to think twice about it because you're such a pain in the ass. Yeah. Oh, boy. The entire time they're talking to, uh, Boo Boo, again, is outside. And then his, like, tongue comes under the door and is always, like, in the camera shot. Like, it's sure. always, like, moving. It's very, and there's very off There's a big off-putting. pool of slobber and some more sounds. I was like, you know, I was like, this is like a very Gene Simmons esque That's right. Uh, Ranger Smith then pours his ha- heart out to Yogi about the situation, and he um, then, then he goes to shoot uh, Boo Boo. He finally decides he has to do it, and then Yogi knocks him over the head with a lamp, and then they start to fight. And this is a big fight scene, like for yeah. a cartoon. This is like an intense fight scene. There's a, uh, a lot of rolling around. Very again, homo homo ironic. Homo, isn't it homo ironic? <laughs> don't you think? Love a little Morissette. too homo ironic. Yeah, I really do think. <laughs> It's like homoerotic on a George Michael's death oh, day. Oh, oh. All right. my heart! That cheap was the line. Was a, that was the line, buddy. I was I was just looking for a cheap thrill. Um, yeah, so they have this big fight and they're punching each other, uh, and then all of a sudden, Boo Boo sees this happening, and it makes it something clicks in his brain. Well, I, they're fighting, and I think he actually he gets hit. Right, and, and he tries to break him up, and yeah. then they throw him up against the wall. Yep. So he Boo Boo kind of comes to his senses, and um, and and they're then they're kind of excited to see that Boo Boo's back, and and then he tears the back of Ranger Smith's pants off, and the, again a bunch of butt play happens. The, the the that's the rest of this cartoon is uh, 
Yoki is turned around with his ass facing the two of them, giggling as he's like looking over his shoulder, giggling, and there's just a lot of a lot of ass smacking going on. He rips the pants off of Ranger Smith, and you're not seeing the uh, white uh, boxer shorts with the red hearts. You're seeing his bare ass with zits on it, <laughs> with a bunch yeah, of zits on it or something. And so then you know it's it. it, it the screen goes black, except it zooms down to a little circle, and it's Boo Boo's butt, and it's just wiggling back and forth. Well, before that, they're slapping each other. Yeah, they're everyone's, slapping the shit out of each everyone's other's Everyone's slapping each other's asses, and the, their butts are bouncing, and they're giggling about it. <laughs> they're just so literally slap happy <laughs> about the ass situation. Well, they just knew it was over, and it's time for the big finish. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's why you don't see. That's why it went black, except for the little circle. There's a bunch of spooge just <laughs> flung all over the screen. The big finish, just a bunch big. of asses. Um, and yeah, he jiggles his, his ass jiggles during the credits, and that's it. And that's it. But I tell you what, not it for the turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. Oh boy, Boo Boo runs wild. Why didn't this show work? Uh, Andrew, you want to start? In your opinion, why don't you think it worked? When I was watching it, the biggest issue I had with it overall was it didn't feel like a show, like a pilot show. It felt like it was just another episode of a cartoon. I'm not sure there was much there to go on. I mean, unless if you were just going to do just more ridiculous stuff with Boo Boo every week going crazy. I guess my biggest question is what happened to Cindy? Uh, She's pregnant. Is she pregnant with Boo Boo's kid? I I don't know. I mean, that's... she She got Boo Boo Bebe. (laughs) <laughs> it just didn't feel like there's probably enough there. It felt like a nice tribute, you know, to the creators of Yogi Bear and all okay, that. Oh, sure. Nice. I'm not sure if it's the right word. But, you know, because I don't think you Homage. 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 Ooh. Well, what, what, homage. Homage. What would you have done to appr- uh, improve this, Blake? <clears throat> well, for me, I, I didn't really see how you could go with um, – it being about Boo Boo, like the cartoon about Boo Boo. Yogi Bear is a staple. Yogi and the Ranger is a staple. And Boo Boo has always been the 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 uh, middle guy, you know, the setup guy. I guess. He's a sidekick, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's the Jiminy Cricket. He's the conscious. Right. When have you ever seen a sidekick show work? Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. It, yeah. it's, 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 it wasn't called uh, The Tonight Show with Ed McMahon. Right. Right. I think um, if you would have went with a Ranger Smith cartoon... And then it had more than just Yogi and Boo Boo in it, like the trials and tribulations of him. You know, maybe some wild mallards had. You know, were well. They, doing... they have a whole host of Hanna Barbera Bar- characters. They could have done something with sure. on, along this line. I mean, every from Huckleberry Hound up to you know anybody. Yeah. <laughs> what was the What was the the pink? Not the, not the pink panther. The, the, well, he was pink, wasn't he? He was something like this, even. Oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name though. I think he was... Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> No, I don't think that was it. But now, I, I, you know what? I really do think it was Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> it was it, Top Hat Cat? No. it was. He had a hat, though. He had some no, kinda... this guy, did, the pink, it, it wasn't the Pink Panther, obviously. But did, did he have just cuffs? Slightly... Did he have just cuffs on his, around his yes, wrist? Yeah. And he wore a hat, right? Yeah, I guess he had a hat. Yeah. Stage it was a whole... exit, stage left <laughs> event. There you go. Oh, this is gonna drive me I don't know. He's going to find out. Uh, yeah. You're going to use your vast knowledge of tablet to find out, Andrew. Appreciate it. I would like, if this had survived, um, I, I think the, the title Boo Boo Runs Wild really... Pigeonholed. It, it re- absolutely pigeonholes. I don't know. Maybe they could break it open, though. Maybe, maybe Boo Boo, with this cast of characters, could have done something. If it had survived... There, there, there's so much weirdness that they could do. Sure. There's so, they, they how, could, long, how, many, how many seasons did Brendan Stimpy go? I, I, uh, I think purists would say two, but in reality it was probably four. And then they, John K. released some like adult versions where there was like, straight-up cartoon nudity nice. um, like years later. Uh, but I think for purists, they would say there's two seasons that just really, really kicked ass. Mm-hmm. But after that, I think uh, the Nickelodeon brass kind of put their thumb down and said, hey, you can't be that weird. Right, you, right. you can't be that weird. Kids are loving this. You can't. Adults are loving this. You can't do that. That's right. I'll go as far as to say, okay, who's the... I don't know his name. Is that the one we're looking for, though? Yeah, that's that's the guy that's we're him. looking for. I just can't think. I, I'll find his name. I will say that, that in my bedroom, as we speak, I have a Stimpy doll on my on my uh, windowsill. Nice. I, I love... I am a huge fan. I am spending you are in. Uh, maybe Top don't Cat. Don't on... The electric fence. You remember that? Nope. I didn't watch that much. Fair enough. 
Um, that was that episode actually with, with Sven. That's oh, what I said. yeah, that, that character's actual name is Top Cat. Oh, Top. Mm. I said Top Hat Cat, but just Top Cat. Yeah, there's a pink one I thought. There was a pink one I thought. Look, look for Pink Cat Hanna Barbera. Awful. <laughs> Put that in. Pink cat, Hanna oh boy, let's uh, let's begin our final descent, shall we? Put your seatbelt back on, Andrew. No. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. Snaggle pussy. Yeah. Snaggle pussy. I, I thought it was an S. I could not. I could not get there. I kept, I kept wanting to say sassafras. I it had it had the word puss in it. You think I would have got it right off the bat? For sure. <laughs> IMDb score. Um, what do you What do you guys think the IMDb score would be for Boo Boo Runs Wild? Um, I quit looking at the IMDb pages. Okay. Because um, you do all the work anyway. Um, out of ten. Out of ten, of course. I would say people probably gave it a seven point five. Okay. Andrew, ter- 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 um, take so a stab I, at it? Three and a half. Wow. Let's split the difference and call it a 6.7 from 143 reviews. Wow, that's a lot of reviews. That is. is. We'll get some listeners out of this one. Uh, we've got some critic reviews and we've got some viewer reviews. We'll start with the critic reviews from Daniel Rocha with Boo Boo Run- Runs Wild. Chris Verluski delivers his v- vision of Yogi Bear cartoon, though he calls it a Ranger Smith cartoon. As expected, it's odd, vivid, and pretty gross. When Ranger Smith's my- myriad of rules separate Boo Boo from his favorite bear type activities, the little guy snaps. Blah, blah, blah. It's a pretty good uh, premise, and I love the old-school backgrounds and classic Hanna-Barbera theme music. I also love Chris Feluski's voice acting as Boo Boo, but I have to say this isn't the man's best work as a director. It drags on too long. There are too many scenes in, in, of, of too little value, which I would call filler. If the animation wasn't so good, you, you can only watch Boo Boo uh, and Cindy growling and telling each other for so long before, so, before you say, okay, I get it already. Do you think they could have to cut this down to 15 minutes? That that is would I, honestly would, would that is to me that's what's wrong with this that's the sweet spot for this show. Ren and Stimpy was hey here's a half hour cartoon you get you know two full cartoons and maybe a weird little commercial that they made in the middle. A lot of that stuff was like nine to ten minutes. So this would work better as a, like a paired with something else. I absolutely think it was or two episodes just like even current day SpongeBob is two episodes yeah, in a half hour. Um, that's I think this would work better in, in that capacity. And uh, apparently Daniel Rocha, hopefully he, he thinks the same. Um, viewer reviews, a hilarious makeover for the smarter-than-average bear, 9 out of 10 scars. This is from Durango 5 from the United States of America. John K and his demented yet extremely talented Spumco team did a great job redoing the old Hanna-Barbera characters such as Yogi Boo Boo, Ranger Smith, and everyone else in the modern Twisted World uh, for a one-time-only special on Cartoon Network. But... Uh, don't let the last line catch you off guard. Although the humor was dra- uh, dramatically changed, the same old 50s-style music was used, and the same bright, colorful backgrounds and paintings were also used to make this cartoon true to the original. I, that, to me, is a huge plus about this show. Right. Do you, did you... In this episode, Yogi didn't... He seemed kind of dumb. I, did you consider Yogi dumb in the originals? I thought he was a smooth he was, dude. He was supposed to be smarter than the average bear. Right. But in this, but, he, he seemed kind of uh, milk toast and complacent. Right. I don't know. That's what my wife calls me. Milk Which, toast? And complacent. Oh, complacent? Uh, my childhood, now of, officially gone, by Lammy Pie 2 from L.A., California. Ah, L.A., California. Lammy Pie 2. Um, let's see. Gee, I got a chance to see this the other night on Adult Swim, and I am ambivalent to say this uh, at the least. I guess I'm still in that kitty mode for the smarter than the average bear, Yogi, Boo Boo, Cindy Bear, and Ranger Smith. Delightful. What was that word she used? Ambivalent? Uh, ambivalent. Is it yeah. necessary to use the word ambivalent no, in, that, a, that in a review of a very, fucking cartoon? You know what? We usually review, in the next section, we review the show. Let's review Cindy's review yeah. in, in use of the word ambivalent. Out of a one to seven scale, how do you rate ambivalent? Two. 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 Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. Blake? I'm, 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 either way, I'm fine. Either way, okay. Are great, you great review. Uh, I'll, I, I agree with you. <laughs> Don't be ambivalent about the situation, all right? I also give it a two. <laughs> um, and the last one, nine out of ten scars. Interesting, symbolic short made by John Kay and Spumco by Jack Van Winkle from U.S. Um, I like a good product. This is one of them from the creators of Ren and Snippy. Nine out of ten scars. I like a good product. Great. Great. In my hair. And, you know, that's what those guys had to say. What do we have to say? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCI Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. 
Just like scoring the word ambivalent, now we turn our attention to the actual pilot in question, Boo Boo Runs Wild, taken from the classic television show from the 1990s, Wings, given a 1-7 to seven, uh, seven scale based on the characters of Wings, one being the worst, it's a Roy Biggins, all the way up to a number 7, the best you can get, it's going to be a Brian Hackett, you Brian know it's a Hackett Brian Hackett, all the, way. The, the virtually unreachable number 7, uh, Captain Philip Restisher, I turn to you, how, to you, how do you rate Boo Boo Runs Wild? Um, I was disappointed. Uh, for many of the reasons we talked about, out of seven, I'm going to get a bit a three point five. Wow. Okay. Uh, very rare for you to go a point. Um, I had the Sydney Sydney, Sydney bump. Half it, half a point for the Sydney. Isn't bump. it weird when uh, female cartoon characters can evoke sexuality? It's not weird at all. Andrew, I turn to you. <laughs> okay. How do you rate Boo Boo Runs Wild? Oh, on a scale of one to seven, I'd have to give it a two. It's ah. it's just it's too much. I guess I think it would have been better for them shorter. Yeah. Uh, they would they would have kept it darker and just kept going a little further down that demented hole. Oh, so you like that part? of Yeah, it. It, that's that's the part that surprised me, and I, okay. I actually kind of enjoyed it. Okay. You know, it, just keep going down that hole and see how far you can go without getting like the Cindy say hole? that all the time. Definitely the Cindy hole. Get down in that Cindy hole. Take that tree pussy as far down as you can. Go. I mean, go on. <laughs> Are you telling me you wouldn't have laughed your ass off if you would have blasted that door open and got Boo Boo with it? I mean, <laughs> nice. That would have been nice. Woo. It would have been. A, it would have been a great, just humorous end to it. Then him and you know Ranger and Yogi could go have their you know yeah. Their why butt not slap a fun? Why not cut the pilot off? That would have been about this about the right time. You sh- you know you show Boo Boo g- morphing into you know you know Rogue Bear you know right and then. Right, you go all the way until Yogi opens up uh, the bushes and sees him fucking, and then just black. That's boom. it. Cut to black. Cut to black. Da, 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 and just let the let the let the audience just kind of visualize how it goes from there. Does Yogi join in? This show is built on the back of his songs. <laughs> um, I I'm going the other way. I disagree with you guys. This is definitely not a seven. This isn't even a six. But for me, this is a number five. Okay. Um, you, you fellows are just a few years older than me. I, I, as we discussed earlier, John K. hit me right in my heart, right at the right time when I was a young man. I am. A, Did I'm you a, kickstart your heart? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, you want to finish that song? Kickstart my heart. Let me come on now. Oh, built on the back yeah. Of song. Baby. Um, I have a thirst. I have a thirst for John K. Whatever he puts out there, I'm going to be interested in watching it. Um, it. It would be stupid for me to say anything he does is going to get a perfect score. This is not perfect. Mm-hmm. I wish it was a little shorter. Um, sometimes the the grunts and the staring at the camera can go on a little too long. It's purposefully weird. That's part of, of his mantra. Um, I love John K. I didn't love this, but I did enjoy it. I'm going to give it a number five, and that is a Bud Bronski by, uh, by the actor Brian Haley, friend yeah. of the show. That's the first Bud Bud Bronski, really, since we've... No, I, I did a right, the, uh, show right afterwards, That's I actually true. did it. That's true. But, but I will give this a number five, because I did enjoy this. Um, I I think in some really bizarre, weird way, it could have sustained itself as a, a series, you know, 10 episodes a year they pump out on Cartoon Network, being, you know, 12 minutes long a piece, just being really weird. He could do this. John Kay is more than capable and, and that's why that's where my score is and, and why it's there. And to me, he's one of the greatest college coaches in history. You know, Coach the, K? The Duke Blue Devils have always, every year, no matter, no matter how many kids leave early, he does a great job. How, and how, where does he find time to animate? <sighs> That's a good question. Right? Oh, boy. And with that, we close the book on Boo Boo Runs Wild, never to be mentioned again. Ever! But please, uh, we're not done. We're not done. we got a lot more to say. Join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of Earth Angels. Earth Angels. Earth Angels. This show is built on the back of their songs. <laughs> My darling dear, love you all the time. He's just going to keep going. <laughs> Here's a little something to wet your whistle. Five very beautiful, good, and potentially dangerous angels work undercover as humans on a whole range of assignments that come to them through prayer. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots and iTunes or your favorite that podcast. That sounds like nothing to what I watched. Maybe I watched the wrong thing. I think I did too. <laughs> and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes or or go to YouTube. Man, you know what to do, Tube. <laughs> love saying that. It's horrible. I just love saying it. <laughs> um, in the meantime, 
We got it's we, Jimmy Avine time. Jimmy Avine time, absolutely. Whatever the fuck that means. Uh, go to Couch Pilots Podcast right. at gmail dot com. Send us an email. S- send us. Well, what did you get for Christmas? We want to find out. It's going to get you some uh, some frequent flyer points. A picture right? of your girlfriend naked. Yeah, we'll take that. Why not? We'll Couch th- Pilots Podcast at gmail dot com. Go to Facebook or Couch Pilots Podcast. Go to Twitter. Twitter's my favorite. You, uh, go to Couch Pilots Pod at Twitter, and you'll be the first to find out who we're contacting, what's coming down the pike. You'll be on the vanguard of, of information from people directly involved with these pilots. Our dialing number as well, 910-PILOTS-1. Mm-hmm. Call it all these avenues so you can get frequent flyer points, surprise prizes. You can guest star on the show. Yeah. Um, we sent Big Dick T a package that had numerous things in it. Would you like me to name off some of the surprise prizes? No. But okay. I, what, what? He had a dirty sock. All right. A pregnancy test. A Mar- That's one. Huh? Was it positive or negative? I, Is HIV positive? Whoa. <laughs> Marijuana test. Mm-hmm. Bottle caps from the bottle cap kid. Um, autographed show notes. A couch pilot's Christmas ornament, which only one of them was made. A lot of people say, um, and why would they? You have such a strong base of, of fans. How do you calculate all this information? Pachinko machine all day or day. Yeah, pachinko machine, the seven thousand pound non electronic machine by which all numbers couch pilots are configured. Um, anytime you contact the show, right? Contact the show, download the show, share the show, tell somebody about the show. It goes into the machine, and every day I wake up in the morning. Look at the numbers. Look at the punch card, right? Look at the punch card and, you know, tells me who's doing what. Yeah. I'm kind of like Santa Claus. That and, and so much more at fcfnetwork.com where you can check out the entire array of shows on the FCF Network, all free, all come out on a pretty much weekly basis. Um, anything else you'd like to say to all of our frequent flyers before we go today, Captain Rest Um, I want to fight a, a kangaroo. Yeah, I, I want to. We're gonna take a flight over one yeah. day. I'm gonna. F- I'm gonna fight a fucking kangaroo. And why shouldn't you? That's your guy given right. You it, saw the video then. No, I've never seen a video. Never seen the video. There's the a video of a guy who slaps him. Slaps the crap out of a kangaroo. It's great. Yeah. I, I bust a cap in his ass. Andrew, thank you so much for taking this flight with us. We really appreciate oh, it's, being aboard. It's great. Brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> oh, we had some good times. Yeah, we kicked the tires, didn't we? Light the fires. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. And with that, this pilot may have been rough. But it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next time. I love you. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip. And we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.